Okay, Tony. <laughs> On to watch number two. Start on your 6306. Okay. So, here we are. Really nice. Clean movement. Looks good, as far as I can tell. Let's go ahead and take off your winding components. shards of some sort of hmm. I don't know if those are threads or just the top of this post but that's interesting nonetheless components. Alright, there are those die fix settings. Distinction between 6309s and 6306s, of course. Take this gasket out of here. Comes back to you. Ooh, got a little bit of dirt here. In your center wheel, jewel, got a jewel here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and remove your balance. safe spot and give it a good clean. Alright. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove your crown. Good. It's got its rest washer. Spring is good. We're going to rebuild that, put a new seal inside. I'll we'll come back to that in just a moment. There's your ring. Nice and clean. One little bit of grubbiness here. I don't know what that is, but get rid of that. Okay. There we go. A little bit of material in here. I'm not sure what that's from. Could be old lubrication or something. It might have managed to find its way within the movement. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Splendid dial. Nice. These these patina differently than the 6309s for some reason. The, the loom type is slightly different, so you get a different kind of look. Um, oh, boy. 
Man, that is chewed, chewed up. Boy, that's that's not cool. What is that? So that's the top of that somehow got ground down a little bit. It's weird. Don't see that very often. Okay. Let us increase safety with plastic. side here. These definitely were marked, so this should have a, a date mark close to your case back. Seven one. Case back. Seven four. Huh. So, about three months apart, which, you know, is not unreasonable. Scary part over. <laughs> Look at that. Blue Saturday, red Sunday, kanji. Just the neatest. Just the neatest stuff. All right. Okay, so let's get to work. Now, usually, what I do is I take these die shock springs out just like that and we clean everybody and there's your Jewel for your die shock. Cap jewel here. Be nice if it would come off. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, Rotoco to the rescue. Just had to break it loose. All right. There's your cap jewel. Excellent. Okay. All right. Now they're secure. 
and we can move forward. see where your your um, ratchet wheel has worn into your into your bridge and that's due to the floppiness of the barrel moving because it is not jeweled which we will take care of that's why we do this these watches suffer suffer from their programmed death <laughs> essentially I think Seiko just said you know what these are throwaway watches nobody's ever gonna keep these things for 50 years ha 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 showed them didn't we I don't know if we showed them or they showed us. Regardless, somebody was shown. All right. Lots of S2 lubricant out here on your barrel. There's your fourth wheel. And your third wheel. And the coolest hacking lever in all of Seikodom. I don't know if that's a real word, but there it is. The 6306 hacking lever. Very cool. Escape wheel. In your barrel. Ooh. Carnage. Carnage down below. Some rough looking stuff basically just old lubrication that was in the barrel that managed its way out of the barrel after years and years and years and years of being wound. Some dirty stuff on your center wheel. Components. Okay. Now. Now to the flip side. clip. Make that nice and clean. Take off your disc. Put it in its house. There we have it. Calendar side. Oops. 
Come on. Come on. Stay. There we go. Right. Die shock. Two for one. amazing and all of this stuff that you see remaining there are literally three screws that hold all of it down it's just plate on plate on plate which does the trick but man is it simple low cost and efficient like most of Seiko of this era it wasn't too much Involved. All the screws are the, basically the same. It's only it's a movement with only, I think, three distinct screw types. Maybe four. No, no real variation. All right, can opinion. That seems a little weak. But we'll have to take a closer look at that. All right. This works, comes apart with that one screw. Come on, stay with me. Don't forget your pin. And there it is. There we go. All right, that is movement disassembled. We're in for some jeweling and some cleanup, but otherwise we are ready to start the process of getting everybody cleaned and settled. You can see here more more wear. Definitely needs definitely needs the arbor ports on this one. So we will get it done. Okay, we'll be back. The moment where I point out your lovely new Arbor port jewel there and here. Um, yeah, so we've done a little bit of prep. There's always some pre oiling and, and replacement of components um, for these uh, 6306s. You have to you have to put in the the die shock. I mean the die fix settings and, and get everything ready to go. So we are there and we're ready to get started with reassembly. So let's get that done. Let's get that done. Okay.
Okay, all is good. Let's go ahead and start putting in the rest of the components. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, hacking lever needs to go. Never forget the hacking lever. You'll be sad. If it's not in there, okay. Now your fourth wheel. Okay, now we can tighten everybody down. install a few components and do some lubrication.
Okay, so we're going to test that when we need to. We'll get the keyless works put together and then give that a good a good test to make sure it's right. Now we lubricate your escape wheel and your third wheel. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay, so next up is your pallet fork. bridge. Next is the all-important placement of the balance. Okay, let's try that one more time.
There we go. All right, so it's moving on its own, which is what we want. It will start as soon as I get this screw in place, I believe will be good. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. that we are running very good all right let's see how we're doing and we'll be back we're gonna put it on the time graph okay Tony well looking okay we knew we had some beat error which was just an adjustment thing so we're gonna try and work that out amplitude starting off good so that's always promising now it's just time to make some adjustments here please ignore all the movement I just uh, move the movement around a little bit. I'll just say move one more time. Um, let's see, we got 2.7. Let's see where we go. What direction should I start in? How about this way? Did that help? Or was that a mess? Oh yeah, that's the right direction. All right, 50% right, of the time. So let's get that dial back just a touch to follow what we're doing here. All right. A little bit beat error. Point eight. Keep going. Smaller moves here. Point four. Not bad. Yep, too far. too far. There we go. There we got it. Okay. Let's check your rate. I think we're going to have to dial up a little bit. That's eh, okay. I think we'll just leave it there. Yeah. I'm going to watch it for a moment. Pretty good. All right. I 
think there's something psychological about losing versus gaining. I think people always want to gain a little time. <laughs> it's just mentally, perhaps, a, a thing. Pluses are always better than minuses for some reason. I'll have to ask a mathematician. Not qualified as a physicist to answer that. Pursuit of perfection. It's not just for BMWs. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Looks good. We're going to let that break in fully and see how we do. Okay, Tony, well, the numbers are really spectacular. Um, solid 230s to 240. Really nice, clean signal. I'm going to make some final adjustments, of course, as we're getting things back in the case, but we're ready to button this one up, make sure that everything is back together and ready to go. So a couple more steps here. disk back in. for function here, day and date turnover, very good, got your Canon pinion tightened up, oh, that feels great, perfect, okay, so next stop, style and hands, we'll be back. Okay, Tony, we are here at the end for watch number two, we're going to Put the rest of your components onto the watch. A couple little things happening with this one. Um, nothing major, of course, but just a few things to note as we go back together. Um, your, you know, you had this uh, interesting bezel and uh, insert with a pip, um, and. I don't know what the story was, but your your click ball wasn't actually a ball, and I'm going to show it to you in a moment. It was more like a um, a stick with a round head on it. Now I'm not certain if that was a factory thing. I've never seen it before. Um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, because you know I don't see every six three zero six ever made. And so I replaced it with 
a new click ball. So you're getting a new click ball. The thing about it was that um, in its in its configuration, it looks as though the the case sort of gave up the click ball. Um, that happens um, a lot with these. They're just sort of cinched into into place, and the metal holds it. Um, so what happens is the click ball sort of disappears and then whoever replaces the bezel um, is left sort of thinking about what they can put in there as a replacement. And whoever was the last person that did that put in this weird little stick with a flat end on it. And that doesn't do much clicking um, because it's not under a whole lot of, if you can see that, there it is, that's the, that's the thing that would take this off. That was in your in your spring that makes your click ball click. So that'll come back to you, um, and you're getting a new uh, click ball itself. The spring was fine. Uh, spring was a factory thing, um, but that thing I don't know what it is. But you will get it back. Okay. So last piece is your winding weight. There that goes. All right. Perfect. Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. New case back seal. New bezel seal, rebuilt crown and stem. Get in there, seal. Everything. Now I put your old crystal back on, so let's well let's have a look at the splendor that is your 6306. Wow, what a great watch. Alright, so the hacking turtle. Oop, what happened here? Come on. Okay, so um, a really, really good example. The case cleaned up so nice. It was really good to begin with, but after it's been cleaned, of course, it's really, really good. Um, your crystal that was replaced a while ago, I guess it was 03 or so, um, that has a couple little scratches. You can just feel them with your fingernail if you go across. Um, it, you know, we can always change it if that's something you decide you want. I went ahead and put your, your new bezel on with a new seal and you can hear the clicks with your new ball. Nice, nice bezel. Just, you know, these things are so good. So, um, good alignment. Everything works exactly as it should. Let me go ahead and take these. These are such good, good watches. So hacking as we should. Let's go through the time and date changeover. Your hand alignment is spot on. So one nice thing about these hacking movements is that you can get the, you can get the alignment perfect. As nothing's advancing. So there we go, the 13th. And should go to Sunday. Very good. And we can go to the quick, quick day and quick date. There's that. And all the way through. Nice kanji. Today is the 14th. Perfect. And the time is 2. Now let's go past noon. It's currently 2.16. 2. 14, 2, 16. two. There we go. Okay. Just a great little watch. Came out really spectacular. And the numbers are phenomenal. Um, you'll have a couple things coming back. So your um, 
course that piece we just described a couple seals your your new your new bezel didn't have a seal but there's your case back seal and that little pin that's right in there um, there's your bushing and your crown seal of course is right here should be a circle it is a flat flat cross section that's your bushing for your arbor port your seal and your pin okay well this one's been fun it's a great watch and um, I look forward to getting to the next one we'll go start with the Willard so um, all right Tony thanks again I'll be in touch <laughs>